Hi, my name is Terry Lee, and in this video, we're going to make a full-sized 10-page, um, not 5-page, 10-page um, accordion spine uh, book. Now, in the first video that I did, I showed how to make an accordion spine and um, make a five-page book. I used a different kit from this because this was from a tutorial that I followed and did for my own personal uh, just benefit. So, um, and this was only five pages and um, it had a little hidden spot with a little notebook in it. Now we are gonna put a little notebook in ours too. Um, so what we're gonna do, someone asked me, could you make a full sized, oh, and it had a little card in the top of each, each page. Okay, so someone asked me, can you make a full sized um, book with this type of spine? And I said, I don't see why not. And by full size, I thought bigger than five pages. Then I realized they also could have meant full sized as far as not small in dimension. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna tackle both things at once <laughs> in my infinite wisdom. And so this is what I discovered. Um, yes, you can. Um, I did a couple of experiments and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, what you're going to need is two pieces of eight and a half by 11 typewriter paper, not the heavier paper that we used in the smaller book. Um, you're going to need some lace to cover the spine. You're going to need a 10 page junk journal kit and we're going to be using the 10 pages that are the ones that you fold. In other words, they have the divide down the middle and they're meant to be folded like this. Um, the one that I'm using is called The Cutest Christmas and it's by Victoria Designs and it is a cute, a very cute uh, book kit. It's not one that has um, pages that um, can be written on. Somehow I have parts of them upside down, so I'll go through that in just a second. Um, but uh, it, it will make a cute book and you can decorate it a little bit. Um, you're gonna need pa paper for your notebook, your little notebook. Now I have way more than what I'm gonna use. Um, I, it, this is also typewriter paper because you need the book to be thin. And um, I sprayed mine uh, with my alcohol ink so that it's got uh, so that it's red or, or it's got red to it and it also has that little bit of a gold sheen which is that kind of a custom ink that I make you're also going to need uh, a full size sheet not one of the folded ones that you fold but like a backing sheet and then you're going to need to have it printed on both sides because it's going to be the we're going to cut it down and make it the cover to our little notebook all right and you're going to need to put your cards in the top and um, I'm not going to show you the cards because I'm pretty sure you guys can cut rectangles of paper and stick them in the top of the book but you're going to need some cardstock now you'll have to excuse the crease in mine it came that way from Amazon they gave me a refund because it's not really usable this way um, and uh, I didn't have to send it back. Apparently, they didn't want creased paper back. So, haha, <laughs> paper back. Anyway, so what we're going to do this time, first let me show you the one that did not work. Okay, so here we have the original. And it's small. And we used the cardstock weight paper to make the spine. All right. Then, actually, this is the original that I did following the tutorial by uh, Emma Femra. That's her name on uh, YouTube. Uh, the one I did, I forgot, and it's in the living room. So, you're not going to see that one today. Um, so, I decided, well, I will try to do a full-sized one with the cardstock spine. As you can see, this one's fairly... Uh, big and I soon discovered 
that A, because I, and then I decided I didn't want little pockets on the top. So then I discovered A, um, it worked if you, um, for the first page, but then once you started getting going, it wasn't working. Um, it was too, the cardstock is too heavy folded in half for these full sized pages. Um, and so, and the farther you got, the worse it got. I also tried to use, um, tried to conserve on my glue because my glue's not coming until tomorrow, my Fabrifix. So I thought, well, I'll use some Eileen's quick dry tacky glue and I've never had luck with white glue. But I tried it and it wrinkled, it wrinkled my paper. So those were my, this is my failure. Um, it was really hard to work with, you know, to get the spine over to glue the page to each one. And so that was the failure. And that was video attempt number one. <laughs> so then I decided to make a trial off camera and it worked like a charm. I did something different. I did a couple things different. I used printer paper instead of the heavier paper and at, with my idea of gluing the two spines together even though it was going to work um, it was really hard to work with there were just too many there I this is the one I started to make sure it was going to work I did it all the way to the joined spines as you can see it worked just fine um, and so you too can have a larger book I'll show you how to do it, but um, you do have to put the pockets in the top because folding them backwards like this and putting them on this type of spine, you can't really get all the air out no matter how you fold it because you're putting um, the paper, you're putting it on either side of this piece of paper. And so that gives you like a gap you know in the middle and so you can never get it completely flat unless you have that uh, pocket in the top so that you can smoosh the air out does that make sense okay so this is the one I've got that worked so far I was just gonna start from here on this video and show you but I was very close to where the where I joined them together and I didn't start out with it that way so I wanted to show you from the beginning uh, how I did it and made it work. She says confidently. <laughs> so the first thing you have to do is when you have your paper, you're, you're gonna do your paper landscape wise and you're gonna cut it to the height of whatever the height is of the paper that you're using. Now this is the full width of this with just a very small amount trimmed off so um, you are not going to, I would imagine, have anything bigger than this. This is probably close to 8 inches. Yeah, 8 and 1 eighth. Yeah, 8 and an eighth. So you're going to want to cut this to 8 and an eighth. All right, and you're going to need two. And this is what our spine's going to look like here in a minute when we get when we get done. This is one half. I went ahead and did that ahead of time. They figured you didn't need to see me do that part twice. And when I printed the pages out, I trimmed the white off from around the edges. Okay. So to make the folds, now I did cover this in the first video, but if you didn't see the first video, I'm going to do this because with the thinner paper, wild crazy hair um, with the thinner paper you do have to be careful about it moving when you're making the score lines we're gonna make a score line at every inch so you're gonna start at one inch and be careful going down remember the paper isn't as thick you don't have to get as crazy pushing down and you don't want to pop the end and rip the paper and we're gonna go at two inches and at three and four and 
and five. And I'm not going to say the rest out loud because I'm pretty sure you guys know how to count to ten. And you can see the paper's moving on me a little bit, so I'm having to kind of reposition it and straighten it out in between. And then when you get to 10, obviously this is an 11 inch piece of paper. So you're going to have sort of not really an extra one, but you're going to have, you're going to end up with an extra, kind of an extra one that won't be glued together. And that's the one we're going to use to join the two together because each one of these is going to have one of those. All right, so you're going to want to fold this like a fan. You remember when you're in school, you used to do this, fold it on your score lines. Sorry if this goes off camera a little bit, but I have to kind of get it close to, to see what I'm doing. But I'm just going back and forth. I'm just flipping it over and folding. And then flipping it over and folding. And creasing it down. And they should all be lined up in a stack. And it's much easier to do with this typing paper. I will say that. That one looks a little crooked. This uh, looks like it's going downhill a little bit. It definitely is going downhill. Well, I'm just going to show you how to join them together at this one. And I'll use this other one to start with, with the pages. And like I said, I showed you how to do this in the first one. This one is just how to show you how to do it bigger. Okay. So what I did was I set this aside. The The one that failed, I, I went ahead and glued them together. What you're going to do is you've got all these peaks and then you end up with this single at the end. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the two singles, glue them together and it makes a peak. So that way you can just continue on adding pages. And that's how you end up with the bigger book. For those of you that figured that out just now, you're probably good to go. So what we need to do, well, actually, we need to glue the peaks together. But I discovered that it's easier kind of halfway smooth this out so it lays like this and then take the glue and glue the peak together and in that way and by that I mean glue these together here's the peak and we're going to glue those two together normally you would go through and do that to all of them ahead of time and that's what makes it like this okay this is much harder to work with I discovered so I'm doing mine one at a time as I go some people might be going no at this point but I am Terry <laughs> and I am different all right, so we're going to put those together, and your glue is going to feel cold because you're using thinner paper. Now, the page that you want to be your cover has to be on the left side because we're going to fold them with the white side towards each other. Okay, 
You guys remind me to check and make sure they're right side up or upside down. See, halfway through, I think it switches. See, you forgot to remind me to check that. Yeah, see, upside down, upside down. Put them in the order that you want them in your book. I, I want this to be the, the back page. So I put it last. That way I can just go right down the stack. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to fold your paper in half. The opposite way you would is if you were putting it in a journal. Even though we're putting it in a journal, we're putting it in a backwards journal. This is a little challenging sometimes. You want to get it as close as you can. The closer you get, the better your spine part and the better your book will look. Obviously, every book looks better when you do the page straight. Now you're going to open it up. And I actually laid this kind of flat too. And you're going to glue this side to the edge of this. So I put glue down here. All right, so I put glue. Yeah, it's, I told you it was running low. There we go. Put glue down here. Now this is Fabrifix on typing paper, so you don't need a ton. Believe me, it will hold. So we've got this end that we folded over and glued, and then we're going to lay it flat. And we're going to line it up where the crease is even with the edge of the page. And the paper is straight. Flip it over and make sure, see, that's not straight. In fact, it's not even close to straight. Use Fabrifix. You have enough time. Let me turn that towards myself. I'm sorry. I know that means you're not going to be able to see it, but I need to get it straight before it finishes sticking. When you're filming, never work on camera. some reason it just wasn't going straight so I decided to pull it off and do attempt number two okay Ta-da! Then you're going to just glue it flat. Now, you're going to need a pocket at the top. So when you fold this over to glue it, the fold is going to close this side up. So all you have to do is glue along where the valley is, close to it, not exactly on it, not across the top, just down this side and across the bottom and that will close it up and leave you the pocket at the top so then just fold the page over make sure you keep it straight you know what I mean don't let it slide down on you and go on crooked and make sure it's straight then just smunch it down <clears throat> And it looks like this one folded a smidge crooked, but I can trim that little teeny bit with scissors because it's just um, typing paper. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to glue the next two together.
make sure it's right side up. Now you've got the same thing that you had before. So you're going to take your next page and you're going to fold it in half. Now I'm not going to do this for all 10 pages because I think after seeing just a few, you will get the hang of it. Fold it in half. Lay this here. Put your glue on this side. And as you can see, it's much easier to work with if you haven't glued them, especially with this typewriting paper. Um, because you don't have that curve that gluing all the peaks together ahead of time makes. Okay, you're going to put the paper on here straight, right across, even with this, with the spine. And then you're going to fold it over and glue it down. And you're going to make sure everybody's even. Make sure you're even on here. One page is even with the other. And glue it down. Then you're going to go down the side. Not in the crease, but next to the crease. Remember, we're leaving the top open for our pocket. That's the only thing about Fabri-Tac is it smells because of the acetone. Okay. It's not a water-based glue. That's also why it does not wrinkle your paper. And especially because we're using typing paper, um, then it, white glue would have definitely wrinkled it. Okay, so then we're going to fold it over. Let's look and make sure everybody is straight. Okay. So now we have page two. Rinse and repeat. Glue them together. Put glue on this page. Glue it. I'll do one more. Glue these together. The two, the peak. So that you end up with this. Okay, I've glued the peak like this together, but instead of doing them all at once, see so you're going to have that extra one. Instead of doing it all at once to make it hard to work with, I'm doing them one at a time because it's typing paper. Okay. Make sure everybody's right side up. Hold our paper in half. And then I'm going to glue it like this, just like I did the other ones. And then you're going to keep going. Let's see, one, one page. Two pages. And then I'm going to start. Well, you know what? I'm going to put you on pause. And I'm going to get to this one right here, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, we're back. So after this, uh, after that commercial break, which, excuse me, I did have some coffee. Um, I'm down to 
one last page, and then this little piece. Okay, when I get to this point, if I did this one and then just did this one, I would have a five page book. Well, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, because of the way I folded it. But what I want is a longer book. So all I have to do is, you see how, you see how when you look at this, there's a point and a point and a point and a point, ran out of fingers and a point, and then there's this little piece, right? So what we're going to do is take these two little single pieces and put them together to create another point. That's all there is to it. And then you just keep right on trucking. Okay, so just lay one of the pieces down. And this is where, oh, it's right there where it's crooked. Remember that one bit was crooked and I couldn't figure out why. Now I don't know if I can fix it. I can make up for it with the page. I'd rather have it a little bit shorter and straight than um, crooked. Now, the glue should come down a little bit quicker because I had the bottle laying on its side. So the glue was closer to the dispensing end. So now all you're going to do is stick these two together. Just stand them up and stick them together just like that and now you have an extra peak and you can just keep going so now you're just going to do like normal you're going to glue this peak together And you already have your next peak because we glued them together. So we're just going to put a page on. And that would have been our next to last page. But now it's the middle of our book. We're going to glue it on just like before. This is making me irritated, in case any of you haven't noticed. Now it's giving me spider webs. Okay, I'm going to lay that down. And lay this down. You're going to do the edge by the crease. And then you're going to do across the bottom. The reason I'm going back up is my glue finally. Now my glue went over a little bit, but the worst thing that's going to happen is that my pocket will be a little bit narrower. Right? Kind of smooch the pages down as you go. And now you're just going to keep going. This is another peak. Let's fold it in half. And you keep on going.
fold it over. Put glue down the edge. You can tell I'll be on my computer until Monday when my glue gets here. I'm going to lay your page down. Now remember that was your joint. So now you're just going to keep going just like you've been doing. You're going to glue your point, glue on a page, glue your point, glue on a page, glue your point, glue on a page. Now when you get to the end you're going to have a point I'm just going to glue on your page and then that will be your um, next to last and then your back cover. Okay? So then you'll be completely done. Now to, um, all you have left to do is cover the edge and you're just going to take, remember you're going to have a page covering this white part. So what you want to cover is this part right here. Okay, so you're going to take your lace and you're going to measure it out. And I covered this in the first one. And you're going to glue along here. Put your glue on, on here. Lay your lace down. You know what? I'm going to put you on pause again and I'm going to go ahead and finish these pages. Okay, we're back. Um, sorry about that. I was listening for the, um, <laughs> I had the TV on. I, I was listening for the uh, click that let me know it was recording again, and I didn't hear it, probably because I had the volume on the TV. Now, the reason I turned this on a little bit early is because I'm on my last page, and I ended up with an extra set. All I'm going to do, don't panic when you, when this happens to you, all I'm going to do is just glue all four together and then glue the page on. Okay? So I'm just going to glue the peak like I normally would as if I had another page. So I'm going to glue the peak. Right? I'm going to glue the peak. And now I'm going to glue the two peaks together. And then that gives me just the one to put my last page on. Because what happened was instead of having the single piece at the end, I had the extra peak because I used the single piece in the middle. So just going to glue those two together. I'm going to fold my paper. I'm not sure my lace is wide enough. <laughs> and it's all I have. Or it's the widest that I have. I'm going to glue this last page on. That's what you say when you're on camera. When you're off camera, that, that is not what you say. <laughs> you, you just pretend like you're being good. Now this is going to be a smidge thicker, so your pocket's actually going to be a little bit deeper. And I've made an error somewhere. 
So before I glue it, I'm going to adjust the fold in this paper. Which is kind of hard because I I'll just pull it when I glue it and then I'll make it fold flat. I must have just folded this page off a little bit. So now I'm going to glue down the edge just like on the other pages. Glue down the edge, down the bottom, and then I'm going to forcefully make this page bend to my will. I'm going to hold it till the glue dries. And then I'm going to refold it. I'm still trying to pull. So I'm going to let the glue dry really well before I try to refold this. Now you can see right here on this last page how it's not quite folded exactly right. So now what we're going to cover with our lace is this part right here. Oh, and voila, you have a full size book. With your hidden spine. So it worked. Ta-da! I am going to have to trim a little bit because my paper wasn't exactly folded straight. Cover my glue for, oh, I don't know why I did that. I want to kind of lay it so it's almost to the, uh, to the nozzle. So I want to cover this. Let me see if this piece yeah, it looks like it might be. So I want to cut it to the length of the book, or in this case, the height of the book. And then you want to glue it by gluing all over the spine. Hopefully I have enough glue left because you want to give it a good dose because some of it's going to kind of go down in between. And you want to lay the lace across it and in my particular case because of the pattern I want to lay this middle part right down the middle I'm gonna kind of touch it on there then I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put it like this I'm going to kind of push down on it and smunch it. When it's dry, you're going to just run a little bead of glue across here. I just don't want to pull it. You're just going to run a little bit, little bead of glue across here. and just fold it over. I 
and you're going to, on this bigger one, depending on how big your piece of lace is, you're going to have to hold it and let the Fabrifix grab hold of it. Doesn't take that long to dry. See, this is a little crooked. There we go. Because it wants to pull back because this is the seam is or the spine is so much wider. And then we're going to flip it over. I'm going to run a bead down the back. As you can tell, my dog is in here. Oz. Put a little too much glue at one end and my fingers kind of sticking through the through the lace. So I'm just going to hold it for a second here and let it get grab. I'm going to kind of roll it, make sure it's on there tight. Don't glue it to your countertop or your table or your work surface. So that's my back cover. This is my front cover. And my book is done. Okay. Now, we're already at 45 minutes. Um, so I'm not going to do a separate video on making a notebook um, and then showing you how to make a pocket and put the notebook in. I think you kind of know how to do that. Um, you've seen it before. I've made notebooks in lots of my videos, but this turned out nice. And then you can take the rest of the ephemera that came with your kit and decorate it. This is not a writing journal. This is something you could give somebody at Christmas as a Christmas gift. So now you have a full-sized book. And you don't even have to put a notebook in it, by the way. But you're going to need to make some cards with your card stock. You just want to measure the width of the opening. Okay, and then make the card a little bit smaller. Make it the depth. They're going to be a lot longer than the ones we made for the little book. And in fact, um, if you watch uh, Emma Femra's tutorial on using this specific kit, she will, um, there's tags that came with this kit, and I don't remember the name of it. I will put a link to it below this video. I'll look it up again and see what the name of this kit was so that you can get this one if you want, if you want to make the small one with the tags. Um, if you have one of your own, you know, you may have ephemera that you want to put in there um, that came with your kit. If you want to make a generic tag, then just, um, or writing card, then just measure so that it fits inside here. And then I would put a piece of white paper on the area of the tag so the person has somewhere to write. And then this is wide enough, the opening is wide enough that um, you could put a picture on one side and white on the other side. So anyway, this video was to show you how to make the book. Um, I did say at the beginning we were going to make the notebook, but then I realized as I was going along that really the main part was to show you how to make the bigger book with that type of spine. So there you go. And there it is. <laughs> so have a good day. This is the end of this video, and I will be saying goodbye. 
and I will see you in the next video, which will be just a second for you and a day for me. Bye-bye.